So, your rap name is Susan Mpofu Walsh. Is that your rap name? That's my rap name now too, man. What was your, what was your rap name again in Entity? It was Vice Versa. <laughs> <laughs> Vice V. Vice V, <laughs> Vice V. Yep. So why you dropped the Vice V? You like you like a you like a brother that was Cole Jones and he went to Muhammad. <laughs> you know what I mean? No man, like the thing with this project is, I had so many different like compartments of my life. Yeah. You know, I was the academic and then you know political and then the rap, and then at some point I wanted to do something that just brought every part of me into one place. Yeah. You know, so I was like, I don't want any aliases. I want Cizo and Pofuwalsh to be the author and the musician. So this is a personal project to the extent that it's like finding myself and putting all of myself into one project. It's a solid project, you know, um, a lot is said in it, you know. Um, sure. it's, uh, I mean, like I said, you know, I was listening to it on my headphones mm. and it, I wasn't, it wasn't getting me it's something that I have no control, but I played it in the car mm. and, um, and, I, and, and, and I just love how I love the musicality uh, and the, mes the message just on top of the musicality. Sure, sure. Um, it really took me to my, um, it took me to Dead Prayers, you know. Mm. Um, it took me to mm. Dead Prayers, um, their first album, you know, yeah. and I just, it was the message and there was the music. Sure, sure. Um, how important was you just to get that correct? It was really important, man, because I think a lot of the time when people try to make albums or music about social issues, mm. the message is right, but the sound isn't right, mm. you know. So yeah. what I wanted to do with this project was have something that sounded every bit as good as anything that's on the radio. Mm. And then it also had a message. So mm. making sure that the sound was good, working with really good sound engineers and just getting the sound to a quality that I was comfortable with took a really long time, but I knew I couldn't like I've been out of rap yeah. for a long time, right? <laughs> yeah. Entity's yeah. album came out like a decade ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure. is that how long it is? Hey man, it's crazy. Yeah. When we were sitting in your car after yeah. sweating and playing soccer, that was like fifteen years ago or something. Wow. But um I knew if I if I came back and I did this, I wanted it to be like unimpeachable. You mm -hmm. know. Like when you put it on you were like, this is not a gimmick, this is not like oh, this guy has like come back after like a long time and, and he's just giving us, yeah. I wanted it to be like, wow, he's really doing this. You know? yeah. So that was, that was the aim, that was the ambition. All right, so let's start with the joint. Let's get into the album because I really want to talk okay. into the album. You know, I feel that the album is literally like the mirror to a person, you know, and if not, that means that the person is fake. So, you know, sure. I, I'm gonna start with, 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 the, with the intro. I mean, I've been reading a couple of, I mean, not the intro, but the first track, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, Cizwe. Um, which is obviously your name, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, in that track, obviously you have the, I've seen how you, how a lot of people are always bringing up the fact that like, um, you are, how they bring up your dad, you mm. know, like, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree and you saying mm. things I like. I see you wearing this red, red sweater, man, nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> what EF, 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 is that no, the new, no, 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 no. new merch? <laughs> no, don't push yeah. your father's no, agenda, no, it's no, your no, interview, no, yeah. No, no, no. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, um, interestingly enough, actually, I, now that you say it, this is my, this is my second meeting where this color is highly relevant, actually. Oh, um, nice. Um, the one was business and this is what I still call this a meeting. Mm. But, um, so you know you start you talk about your father you talk about your mother yeah i mean why was it important i mean you do want to you do you, you say you don't want to be disassociated from your father but you also want to be seen as your own person yeah. but your first track the first verse talks about your father why was it key for you yeah. to kind of like talk about your father and obviously you also talk about your mother in the second verse sure why was it key to um to to start it that way why was your father's story so key to start it that way? Yeah, yeah. I knew people were going to come at me about my father in the first mm. place, you know, and it's been happening throughout my life, you know. Yeah. Uh, and we make a joke, but like a lot of people think this is some like EFF project mm -hmm. funded by the EFF. And I know you sampled Julius somewhere, but like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will get to that. 
Did I? No, no. I, I, sa- I sampled Chris Hani as well. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, um, I heard the voice clip. I heard yeah, it. You had yeah, it there. Yeah. Zoop Damas Fall. So, yeah, yeah, you had it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so I, I knew that that was going to be people's first thought when they heard that I was coming out with this project. Yeah. But what I wanted to do was use this as an opportunity to actually tell my father's story. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people know who he is, they see him on TV, mm-hmm. but they don't know that he came from a rural village in the Eastern Cape. Mm-hmm. They don't know that in order to get to where he is now, he got the only scholarship offered to a black student in the Eastern Cape that whole year to mm-hmm. get to Wits. Mm-hmm. They don't know he was held in solitary confinement. They don't mm-hmm. know he was uh, arrested as a student leader multiple times. So I wanted to tell the story of my father's life up until the point that I was born, because mm. everybody knows the story from when I was born, mm. but people don't know the story up until that point. Mm. And also the reason I included my mom in the story is because that's often how it goes. Everyone, mm. like newspaper articles, whatever, it's always like the son of Dali Mbofu. Mm. 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 And if anything, my mom is just as political. Mm. She's just as important an influence. And so I also wanted to tell her story so that people could get a sense of who this person is. Mm. Mm. And it also because I say a lot of political stuff in the album, Mm. but I wanted to open by saying, first of all, this is who I am, just Mm. so you know. Mm. Okay, now let's get into the real political stuff. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. So, I mean, I guess, you know, it's nice just to kind of go listen. This whole politics thing is is being passed over and yeah. and and this this is how it's happening. It doesn't come from my dad only. For sure. It also comes from my mom. And I'm gonna wrap it and write a book about it. Exactly. Does your father have a book? He doesn't actually. He's uh, he's been joking that he needs to write his before I write my second one. <laughs> so <laughs> Has he read your book? Has he's read it, he's listened uh-huh. to the album. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, he, he really likes both of them. Both your, your, your moms also? Yeah, my mom too. My yeah. mom, um, in fact, she was one of the first readers because she oh. helped me with the final edit of the book. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> That's interesting, man. It's an interesting family dynamic, you know what I mean? It is. Um, but, but I'm going to get into that, I, and I'll get into that as just my thoughts as a general person, as an outsider. Sure. But I want to get into the music, you know. So you go, you know, you and Lindau, Lindau yeah. um, from Chorus, you know, how, mm. how everything is done. Man, it's a great, I don't even need to listen to the words. Sure. Great song, sure. you know. I mean, um, you talk about the challenges, the economical challenges, inequalities, and you question whether we've defeated other date. Mm. So my, my question is, it's cool, you come from this political background, but mm. so, so what is the season both for economical solution moving forward? Mm. Mm. Well, well, you might just have to read, read this, because I really detail a lot of how I see the country should move forward. So mm. Imbi Lendao is the first song that relates to one of the chapters in the book. It relates to the first chapter in the book. And sorry, just to add, yeah. each song, like you said, is a chapter in the book. Basically. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you can think of the album as like a soundtrack to the book. Cool, perfect. And um, so you're, you're not going to get the lyrics, read the story. You know, <laughs> also, I can read the lyrics. No, get the book still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so Imbi Lendao is, I didn't set out to write a book or, or make an album that, that offered solutions. I, I wanted to just show people how, how bad I think things were. But mm. it actually turned out through the process mm. that the book actually became very future orientated. So it criticizes what's happening, but it also offers various solutions. So, I mean, I, I speak about that in various chapters of the book. Mm. Um, but Imbi Lendao is, is really about service delivery. Mm. And the argument that I make in the song and in the chapter is that we always think, you know, we've made this tremendous progress since 94. That's pretty much the fundamental assumption of the last 23 years. But if you actually look at the situation of people's lives, if you look at water, electricity, housing, if you look at unemployment, poverty, inequality, you actually find that in many cases they've got worse since 94. And where they've improved, they've improved so little that it's not worth calling it progress. Mm. You know, so I really wanted to start the album by saying, Imbi Lendao, mm. this is where we are. And only once we understand how dramatically we failed, can we actually move forward. Mm. Pretty deep. It's, uh, it's a deep album, you know, but yeah. not deep in the sense of like immortal technique. No, no, and no, you have no, to, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's in, 
pretty deep from the, the information, the information, sure. you know? Sure, um, sure. And then, you know, I mean, jump, jumping on that, you know, I guess, you know, you, you've got Singama Soldier, you know, which um, in, my, in, my, in, my, in my thinking, you know, um, you, 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 you a kid that literally never really, you don't need a hashtag fees must fall, you know, you, you kind of sort it out. And I was just asking, you know, you say university lying to me. Mm. And before, before, before you come across like a lot of other people who feel like, yeah, but you know, it's easy for you to say that because you studied where you studied mm. um, and you've got the education. That message can like almost be a little bit irresponsible if it does, if it's not elaborated, mm. do you know what I mean? Um, and it could be a little bit unfair if you actually, not even a South African university, but like just across, I mean, shit, you went to one of the best universities in the world, right? Yeah. Um, so it almost comes across like it's not fair if it's not within context, you know? So I just want you to, to, to elaborate where the lie, what the lie is. So, mm. Um, mm. so, so you don't sell, a, uh, what we say, a populist ideology. That's true, man. Look, I think on the one hand, it is important to say that, you know, my, my father worked really hard to get to where he was. Mm. And, you know, I was able to go to UCT. Um, mm. I ended up getting a scholarship to Oxford, so he wasn't paying for those fees. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, just firstly, any black South African is, is different from any white South African to the extent that Yes, my, my father did well, but he also has an army of people that he has to support back in the rural areas of the Eastern Cape. Um, you know, black tax is real for any, any black person, no matter mm. how far you go. So this notion that like we're just bawling and like we're just, you know, drowning in the money is, is not exactly accurate. But I'm a lot better off than a lot of poor black students who go to universities. Mm. And the thing about the album is I'm not necessarily always just rapping from my perspective. Yeah. So it's not just like Cesar and Bofu Walsh are saying this. I'm rapping from the perspective of different people in our, in our country. Yeah, yeah. So that song is, is written from the perspective of a protester in Fees Must Fall. Mm. So like when I say, this is our future, you barter. Look at the Freedom Charter. Sent the police in armored Vs, but our fathers were martyrs. Um, I'm, I'm like a student in the protest right there. Yeah. And I'm reflecting that anger out to the world. So. Yeah. I'm not trying to speak on behalf of anyone. I'm just trying to show people the kind of anger that I think is in a lot of young people, justifiably, in our country at the moment. Okay, okay. I mean, you're never going to run away from the fact that the message is being delivered by somebody from who's privileged or, or the assumption is sure. that it comes from uh, a person that's privileged, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, you're never going to get away from that fact. But, um, but I guess, you know, it is, it is key to, to when you bring in education in a sentence and you, you, either, you either bring it up or bring it down, you know, you got to know, you got to make sure that people are getting the right information. For sure. You know what I mean? About that. So, Absolutely. So, I mean, the next joint, you know, I, I just, so you, it was random because I'm, I'm, I'm driving. I'm trying to write the lyrics, right? <laughs> and, um, and, and it was literally like this big Google file, I gotta keep reminding. <laughs> yeah, um, I really so, should have sent you MP3s, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, but fortunately, I was stuck in traffic, right? Oh, so great. I could literally be an irresponsible driver <laughs> driving on, at, at like 20, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. You got this line, so what good is freedom if there's no equality? What good is liberty where they where they, where there is monopoly, what mm. good is bowling in a sea of poverty? What good is money if we if 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 we have no property? Yeah. Um, yo, I just want you to elaborate like that thinking though, you know, um it it, it, mm. it addresses a lot of things in South Africa. Yeah. Um it addresses a lot of things that I feel like are it's, it's the plastic, you mm. know, um and from from you just generally uh what made you tap into that type of psyche when someone when when once again people are gonna go but you good you got you privileged or you can have the potential to be linked in this world sure what what pushed that what pushed that is is kind of related to to your earlier question like a lot of us may be getting on in south africa mm -hmm. you know and a lot of the commercial hip-hop industry a lot of which i like mm -hmm. you know and i think we all owe a great debt of gratitude to the people who've taken it to a new frontier. Mm. But 
a lot of it is just about you know showing how well I'm doing and how cool I am and like you said I could very well do that and lie mm. to the world and just be mm. like oh we balling we mm. we living we out here mm, mm, mm. Um, but I've chosen to use this platform for something else because if, if I am in a position of privilege and those of us who are doing well as young black South Africans are all of us mm. what are we gonna do with it mm. what good is balling in a sea of poverty mm. you know mm. what I mean like we can go on Instagram all day and, and ball mm. and, and make ourselves feel good about it. But what's the point of, what's the point of doing that in a country of this inequality? In the mm. States, one can understand why like hyper-materialism, for example, is, is accepted because unemployment is 4%. Mm. You know, in South Africa, when you're balling right in front of people mm. in the most unequal country in the world, mm. um, sometimes I just get the feeling like, are people totally disconnected from what's happening or is it is it a way of trying to make yourself feel better about how difficult the, the situation in the country is so i was trying to reflect those kind of thoughts and emotions mm. in, that, in, the, in those lines you feel like um there's a sense of um and i i i also see it maybe a bit deeper maybe it's a case of um um you're boiling with whose money mm. you know um, it, you know, it's, will you, are you sure it's your money? Definitely, like that, and also going to Oxford, right? Where you see the bosses of, of the bosses of the bosses, mm. you know what I mean? And nobody's bowling there, they're just, mm. they're just chilling, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you, you realize that like, there's something about pretending like we have a lot of money when as a community, as a country, we still don't. Mm. You know, and so individuals can have money, but still, whose money is it? Whose money really is it? And and if they're breaking off some of that money for you, then best believe there's ninety percent of it that's that you will never see. You know, so what's the point of balling when, in actual fact, you're just being exploited in a way? You know? I felt like um, I felt like there's a that that links back to the economy. That like there's a whole network that you got to build to be a wealthy. Mm. Um, mm. But when you're rich, you're rich on your own. And mm. whenever that one supply of, of thing breaks, or if, you, if you're the only one that's holding your family, if you break it, the whole family breaks. Definitely. But um, when you've got a network of money, of richness, that, that kind of becomes wealth, mm. then you know, there's, there's something to kind of go, this is what we have. But immediately when there's a hundred of us like that, you know, exactly. um, a hundred of us like that one feel like we got to show it because I know you're going to call me up and say, but why are you going to be like that? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. But when there's one of us like that, we know that like there's not enough people to call us up and 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 those that try to call us up is like, oh, you you just a hater. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. A personal story, but on the same, like, from here I'm supposed to go and send my cousin who lives in the rural Eastern Cape a suit because mm. he's got a funeral because like his, his mother passed away under circumstances because there's this really bad road in the and it's like that's not a problem that for example a white South African who's had four generations of wealth needs to worry about you know what I mm. mean like sending a suit to your poverty-stricken rural cousin because yeah. he needs to look good for his 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 own mother's funeral. Mm, you know? mm. So in, in a country like South Africa, you can ball, but how are your cousins doing? Mm. They're going to call you up. How are your cousins doing? They're going to call you up and are say, they balling? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and it's like, maybe if, you, if you're in the States, you know, maybe your cousins are doing okay, so you don't have to. But mm. yeah, like, wow, you're going to ball and then you're going to have a cousin in the Eastern Cape being like... But like, I guess also maybe we're so urbanized, we detached from where mm. we come from. So when you don't know where you're rooted, you might just think that the money you make is a, you might just finish with your family and go, my family. Um, sure. But when you're rooted, you go, my family came from here and then from here and here it's like that mm. and like that. Mm. So, you know, I think there's also a big problem with black people that like, you know, um, um, we the only, I keep saying, we the only race that get told um, um, how people should sell to us and we're the only race that lives a life that literally like um that we, that like we we are willing we are willing even if you can go find out where your roots we are willing and comfortable to not find out mm. 
how far our, our, our family tree goes and where we come from, we're willing because we're so rushing to be a part of the urban world. You know what sure, I mean? Sure, sure. Um, Born to Fight reminded me of, my, of one of my favorite songs, actually, um, which I haven't heard in years, but funny enough, I actually, thanks to streaming services, I actually just looked for it this week. Um, it was that Tracy Chapman song, you know, I was born to fight. Yeah, they ain't yeah. been knocked down yet. So um, I was happy to hear that you guys sure. never really fucked up the title of the song. <laughs> you know what I mean? Glad to hear um, You have a line on the song where you say we're coming for the minerals and, and, and the people need land to produce. Yeah. Do, do you think, you know, we need to, you know, I, I'll constantly keep on saying, do we really need that shit that white people have built? Mm -hmm. Or do we really need ourselves to build shit, you know? I mean, or is it a balance also, mm -hmm. you know? Do I really want the land and when I get it, do I really know what to do with it and produce in it, in it you know? Do I, do, I, do, do I really want the minerals and if I got the minerals, do I have the relationships in the world to kind of work out like a deal where I could like keep the, the whole thing going? Or do I want to create something that they don't have because we, you know, the thing that I think the thing that we do as black people, we forget we black people. We forget that we are creators. Mm. You know, we forget that like everything starts with us, and and then everybody takes from us. Sure. But like then we wanna then we have this big war of taking back, and a little war of creating, a little war of innovating, a little war of these kids going, hey man, you know, I can also create my own thing and become this. As I just need interest in this world and that. So, mm. I mean, so we want our minerals, we want our land. My question basically is, um, isn't it also a time where we go, we got to start getting together and create and start creating? I think that's absolutely right. And the, the flip side of the coin, you know, to what I was saying about balling, because mm. I don't want people to think that I'm, I'm like looking down or condescending on the South African hip hop industry mm. also, because one of the amazing things about it is if you look at the rise of South African hip hop, built by young black creatives, nobody gave us a handout, mm. no government help really. Mm. And we've built this thing to like one of the most incredible artistic moments. The same in, way in white people built it, by the Absolutely. way. Absolutely. In, in worse Absolutely. conditions than hip hop right. co conditions. You know? And an incredible entrep entrepreneurial sp spirit. And, and, and I've heard you say this before, like, Government is, is still, still stuck in trying to fund people by, you know, making young people build factories. Mm. And we're like decades ahead of them, mm. you know. Mm. Give, us, give young people the tools to build the next multimedia empires. Mm. Give us the mm. tools to, to explore what it means to be digitally aware in, mm. in 21st century South Africa. Mm. Give us the tools to build tech, technology companies and yeah. stuff like that. And that's where I think, you know, Taking, taking our own initiatives are important and, and hip-hop is, is an example of how that's been done. At the same time, certain sectors of the economy are important mm. and, you know, unless we start owning the economy, unless the economy moves from, from being the most unequal economy in the world, mm. we're always going to be playing catch-up. Okay. You know? yeah. And I think that we do need to de-racialize the economy. We do need to take back control of key assets while we're also doing our, our own thing, you know, and I don't think those two things are mutually exclusive. So Born to Fight's really saying like, in a funny way, back to the conversation about balling, mm. we would be balling in my eyes if we took back the economy, mm. then we'd all be balling, mm. then we'd all be, you know, doing well. Yeah. And that's what we should really be aiming towards instead mm. of like one or two of us rising really high while mm. the rest of us are, are struggling. Mm. Um, yeah, I think um, um, going back to that, like it, it's really, a question of, um, of, I feel that like some of these things that all these guys that are building whatever they're building, because another black barrier for anything is capital. Absolutely. So, you know, I feel that all these guys that own, that have been running this economy, you know, once you, once that's a barrier capital, then skill, because skills become a problem. Mm. And you got to invest in companies and, with the, and invest in human resource who are actually going to help build black businesses sure. they don't want if they don't want nothing with days then cool but like they should i mean i understand this be but then now now what, what needs to be a key thing for me is that i y'all keep farming and y'all keep doing what you're doing I, we, we need that food you know what I mean? <laughs> we don't want it in the wrong hands yeah yeah but you know um but there's an important factor 
you got to invest. There has to, like the same way people do research, there has to be high research on what is out there that we can, that, that's literally black and that black people can build and that we can actually assist to grow. Like how do we, how do we formalize the, the taxi industry and create a real banking system for them mm. that literally talks to what their needs are? That's a big business, right? Sure. But black people need to run it. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, um, how do we formalize the, the, corner, the corner industry where like people literally use their walls to paint? How do we formalize that, you know, and really make it a proper thing where a big media agency invests in this community that's going to paint, that's going to do this, and they start and brands start buying media in those spaces. Sure. I mean, these are just small ideas. I'm just saying, which I can say can a make if you don't want to, if you a kid that doesn't ever want to go to Joburg, but you want to literally walk to work, you can mm. walk to work because the office is there, the paint is there. You just do the thing. You're a taxi driver. You literally walk to your work. You sleep in your taxi, but it's a real and um, that's why you're having these taxi strikes where because the interest rates are super high because why the business has been built um against like uh, um, um the against like a black um entrepreneurship entrepreneurship kind of headspace it's sure. been built on a that black entrepreneurship headspace is not safe mm, absolutely you know? i mean just you can see the inequality in the way that the, the kinds of businesses and the empires that have been built despite the odds are looked down upon when you go to, you know, a place like Rosebank. Mm. Skyscrapers literally being built all around and the taxi rank is like the same size it was mm. as in 94. Mm. You know, mm. where that's actually the economic hub of the whole thing. Mm. Mm. So there is a need for us to, to look at where people have actually succeeded despite the odds. I think the hip hop industry is a case study in I think the incredible things that are happening in di digital media mm. are case studies that our government and, and governments across the continent should be looking at and saying, this is actually what young people care about. Why don't we use the dynamism that's already in what they care about mm. and support them instead of trying to straightjacket them and force them into this manufacturing view of the economy that we want, but that's actually somewhat outdated. So just as an FYI, you can take this to your your brethren at the EFF, you know. <laughs> you know what's the future of, of, of land? Mm -hmm. Virtual space. Someone is going to sit there one day and go, why does Twitter have 10 million or 12 million people and they're dictating all this information? Who's making this money? Someone's going to sit and say, why does Facebook have so Who's making this money? Someone's going to say, why is YouTube... Someone's going to sit there one day and there's going to be a war, a virtual space war of why is one international com or these few international companies the only ones that are that, that are making money yes they employ people here and there but like the real the next the next land war is virtual space absolutely man. I, i'm with you and if you really think about entities like facebook twitter google what they really are are these digital media companies that use your content for free so you're a free you're generating free content for them they keep all the profits and and sell it to advertisers exactly and here we are just getting our, our recognition and our our vibe on and our, our floss on and in fact you know we're going to talk about these 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 places that own our culture mm -hmm. where they whether it's video whether it's music whether it's all these things we're going to question them um, um, in the next 10, 20 years, which is really clearly China in them, they literally switched on fast. But like, the next war is going to be virtual space mm. because information is going to be key. So you're saying we must nationalize virtual space? Then? Yeah, I'm saying that, you know, <laughs> I'm saying that if you want to nationalize land, you better nationalize virtual space first. Because once you nationalize virtual space, then you start communicating educational content. You start communicating content that makes people go, I actually, you know, I was impressed with the EFF because all of them are like, are going and they're getting doctorates for this, for the, you know, that's, that's super amazing. Mm. But why are they doing it? Because they don't own a virtual space, because we're not fighting for virtual space. I am not sitting there going, well, I want to be like Zosio or Julius because he got this, because they're not sharing the information on why it's important. We, the, the typical thought is that, yeah, they're getting it because you can't have a leader that's not educated. But because we don't earn virtual space, virtual space is literally feeding us all types of information. But the story of why we got to educate ourselves, yeah. you know, why, why, is land, why, why is land important, you know, blah, blah, blah. All those things 
are owned by virtual space. And if we and what we've done as a country, like everything else, we've allowed global companies to own virtual space and we're busy fighting for land and we and, and, and we're busy fighting for minerals for mines that probably don't even have some of the minerals anymore. But then even so, once we get that, we gotta start building the relationships to make that shit work and to make it really operational. But virtual space is developing itself across the world, right? And as it's developing itself across the world, it's defining itself across the world. So we are going to become a country that's defined by the headspace of global virtual space because we're not allowing ourselves to start owning it and defining it. Look, that, that's a really important point. And I think these are the kind of discussions. I have, I have a few others that relate to kind of digital media and, and technology um, in the book. But I don't think the people who, who run this economy even are thinking about that you know and, and one thing I've realized is like young people and this is part of the reason why I, I made this project young people need to realize we're actually smarter than the people who are who we've given this power to we, we I'm telling you now if you gave us South Africa tomorrow give us two years this country will turn around all we years. need all we need is a is an organ organizer organizer mm -hmm. is a person who literally puts us in a you've got a deadline you've got to deliver sure, sure. because we are also a bit a little bit on ADD you know what I mean sure, but sure. all we need is a person who pulls us in line and and we're done absolutely and and I think one of the one of the reasons why that hasn't happened yet is young people haven't been excited by political ideas mm -hmm. right so in politics people are sending look, look at the effort. Right, that these these firms are putting into marketing stuff to young people. Mm. The beauty, mm. the sound, mm. the, the, the food, the, the influences, the, the food. Right? And then a political party comes to you, and it, it looks like it's 1980 something. Mm. You know. So what I wanted to to do with this project is say, if you put in enough effort, if you make it sound as good as everything out there, then young people will be interested. Mm. You just have to invest the effort to make it good enough to catch their interest, because yeah. they're getting bombarded with messages that are really really state of the art. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to get young people interested about politics, about making the society better, we have to invest that energy. And I'm hoping that this project is at least one of the first examples where if you do that, then you'll actually see young people's minds start opening to these questions and, and these issues. Broadcast live.